Beardy, do you want to do the intro this time? Never. Welcome to the Bobby and Beardy Show. I'm Bobby, and as always, I'm joined by my bearded co-host, McBeardy. That, that'd be me. Changing the intro once again, keeping him on his precious toes. Today we'll be talking about Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. Time codes are below if you want to jump about. And also you can check us out on Spotify if you wanted to. And uh, you could leave us a like on our video below if you wanted to. That'd be super swell of you as well. McBeardy, hello. How are you doing? I am I am not well as we we recently discussed. I have many issues, some of them illness related, others been thirty years of issues. Uh but I will I will get by, I'll survive. The podcast comes first. The podcast comes first because of the <laughs> excellent quality of films we like to discuss, such as Godzilla X Kong. Uh have you been up to anything interesting since we recorded a couple of days ago when we did Ghostbusters? No, so basically we travelled back uh night before Easter, had uh dinner with my other house family, that was very, very nice. And then the illness hit, and I've done very little since. <laughs> um, but relaxing has been something useful, something I haven't done in a while, so that's been fun. Perfect. Well, had a haircut. Is that a haircut, everybody? Oh, actually, you know what? I hadn't noticed before, because I'm, I'm not very observant slash bad friend. But it looks good. Well done. Um, well, I have I've done a couple of little things since uh, we last recorded. First of all, uh, my DIY, which I was doing last week, and I, di I somehow forgot to mention why I was sitting in a disgustingly dirty jumper. Uh, it's because I was, I was, I've been doing DIY in my living room, fitting new skirting board. Badly, although, turns out, looks all right. Um, but also, what I really want to say is uh, I watched Good Omen Season 2, finally. Uh, I enjoyed it. There you go. That's my, that's my quick review of it. I actually enjoyed it Works. more than Season 1, I think. I loved all of the flashbacks to them uh, throughout history. Uh, especially during their time in Edinburgh, uh, because I'd just been in Edinburgh and I was just learning about the stuff they're doing in it, uh, body snatching and all that fun stuff. Uh, also, I'm reading this book, uh, the Witch well, graphic novel, The Witcher Omnibus Volume 2. I've done Volume 1, obviously, and uh, it's real good. Try and get it on cam. Look at how nice it mm -hmm. is. Hopefully there weren't any boobs on any of the things I showed there. Um... <laughs> just realized as i was flicking through. <laughs> um so yeah good omens thumbs up uh witcher omnibus thumbs up enjoy anyway have you played any of the witcher games watched the witcher series the films so i i i okay first of all i stopped watching the netflix show in season one didn't enjoy the pacing of it or really the structure I, i'd stopped wasn't a fan um i actually built my pc to play uh the witcher 3 wild hunt having played the second one and really enjoyed it mm -hmm. and i've never played it i've had this wow <laughs> just ne i just never got around to it i was doing other stuff streaming other games and i, I never got to it slash the i was gonna it. say add it to your list we'll stream it uh maybe then we'll review the witcher series the film that was on netflix which was half decent so we'll make a whole witcher month or something <laughs> witcher month yeah <laughs> no i but i really i really i really enjoy the graphic novels good. as well good, good. anyway let's shall we talk about godzilla x kong Whilst we're here, we may as well. Yeah. While we're here, we may as well. Did you notice, by the way, it's the Battle of the Empires this last couple of weeks? Because we had the Frozen Empire of Ghostbusters oh, yeah. and the New Empire of uh, of Godzilla and Kong. Um, not really a new empire. Much like Frozen Empire. Before we even get into it. <laughs> before we even get into it. There's no new empire, is there? Is there? There's no new empire. No, Just like there was no there's Frozen Empire. There was a Frozen Street... In <laughs> Ghostbusters, and that's probably more than there was in this. Anyway, let me give you the rundown before we get off track. Oh dear, oh dear. Godzilla x Kong the New Empire is the fifth film in the MonsterVerse franchise and is the sequel to Godzilla vs. Kong, which was released in 2021. Uh, just post-pandemic when people were like, man, I really want to see films, regardless of the quality. Um, mm. It's also, side note, the 38th film of the Godzilla franchise, apparently. Uh, I thought there were more. And the 13th film of the King Kong franchise, just in general. That just how many films mm. they've featured in. I do wonder if that counts uh, Ready Player One, because King Kong's kind of in that as a, like a cameo. Probably not. 
Uh, it's directed by Adam Wingard, uh, who directed the previous film. Screenplay is by Terry Rozio, Simon Barrett, and Jeremy Slater, based on the story by Terry Rozio, Adam Wingard, and Simon Barrett. The film stars Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, Dan Stevens, Kaylee Hottle, Alex Ferns, and Fala Chen, with Hall, Henry, and Hottle reprising their roles from the previous films. On a budget of $135 million, which is less, apparently, than the previous film, uh, probably because it's got far fewer... Uh, real people in it. Uh, it's made, according to the box office mojo, as of today, it's made $202 million. Dollary dues. American, not Australian. Gotta do the joke. Uh, Always. <laughs> and uh, it's got a runtime of an hour and 55 minutes. Why do I mention that? Because it's too long. <laughs> but, Biddy, I've given you all the facts there, but what's, what's the story about? Come on, help me out. I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely memorable. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's the the story of sort of Monarch, the company that looks after all of these Titan apex predators. Um, Godzilla is now sort of roaming Earth, fighting off Titans that will do humanity harm. Godzilla has moved downstairs. He's gone to the um, the subterranean. He's living in the basement. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Hollow Earth, which I'm very concerned is going to bring about a whole. Well, there was Flat Earth. Now there's Hollow Earth situation. Um, which we'll discuss in much more detail. Uh, and then it turns out that uh, there's something something strange. Uh, <laughs> in the neighborhood? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Um, something bad's happening, and there's a signal that's uh, being sent out, and they need to find out what's happening. Uh, Kong has to come up into Godzilla's turf, for lack of a better way of putting it. And, and beef gets started. I don't like what I'm saying right now, but <laughs> beef gets started. <laughs> and uh, we need to find out why, what's the situation, what this new empire could be. And it's a whole story going through that. And if I say much more, spoilers will happen. So that's the basis. I really don't think there's too much to spoil about this film because essentially oh, it's big things <laughs> punching big things, just oh, like yeah. all of the other films. I'm going to go like straight away. If you liked the previous Godzilla movies, you will like this movie. I mm -hmm. think that's just... It's the same thing, but I would actually argue better. I, I, yeah. I den genuinely, not genuinely, like I wanted to say, <laughs> genuinely I think this is a much better movie than Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, yeah. Mostly because it hasn't got so many really annoying human characters in it. Um, oh, no, I think that the, the human cast they have is actually really good for it. Every character has a point. Um, they're funny or they fit their role really well um i do think that obviously there's a lot more based on uh, cgi on this but even then it's not bad there's there's some elements to it like the um anthropomization of some of the characters specifically kong which i don't like um i liked like in the jack black one where he is just big ape now he's like well i'm gonna walk like a person i'm gonna take a shower like a person basically uh, which i didn't like um <laughs> yeah yeah Kong is Kong is so much more human uh mm -hmm. in everything uh in this film and he uh he's kind of like the main character previously oh, yeah. he, he's the point of view character for a lot of it in the previous ones it's always been human character look up big monster and big monster do punch but it's always the humans going oh bloody hell but in this one it's Kong going oh bloody hell um, he's Australian, bad Australian in my in my head canon, just so you know. All the dollar dues. All those dollar dues. <laughs> American, not Australian. Uh, yeah, so he he's he's he, it's completely flipped. Uh because yeah, suddenly he's he's a he's a regular character doing his own side quest, and then you've got other regular characters doing side quests. Godzilla's still Godzilla, just <laughs> mooching about, knocking things over. You'd think he'd just just Half of his damage is just because he's too lazy to lift his legs. So you, you say that whole knocking things over thing. Um, some of the, the research I did on this, apparently the way that he interacts with the world, and especially the way he sleeps in the, um, the landmark. Col okay, fine. I'm pretty sure it's in the trailer, so I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable <laughs> okay. saying it. Also, it doesn't matter. Okay. He's just having a nap. So. <laughs> true, true. Um, apparently that's based on one of the uh, director's cats, the way he sleeps in like a bowl or something at oh, home so they were like yeah super sick. cat behavior absolutely <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean yeah. the That's scaling I i'm not sure about uh hey it's basically a main coon as far as i'm concerned <laughs> i think <laughs> i don't i think godzilla is too big to get in there and i know that's what the whole thing oh. is about cats yeah, yeah. 
getting into small <laughs> things. But Godzilla's Godzilla. Yeah. He's just going to crush the oh. damn thing. I, I the, the yeah. scale the scaling in this film is all over the place. Hundred percent, in, in my opinion. Um, you've got Godzilla fitting into things that he, he shouldn't be able to fit into based on how tall you've told me in previous movies and scenes. Yeah. Um, and you you spend so much time in the Hollow Earth with um, Kong, uh, who's big, massive, gigantic, mm-hmm. you could say. But when he's in the Hollow Earth, he's just like everything else is big as well. So you kind of lose the awe. So my my issue with the Hollow Earth thing is everything else is big. Like the scaling is normal for him, but then trees are still normal sized. Like. Yeah, that doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> no, it, it's a bit weird, uh, mm. and the, the whole Hollow Earth stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, every, oh, that monster's big too, is it? Any, any regular size stuff? Also, like, scaling wise, I want, I just want to see a diagram of the Earth, Kong, and like all the other animals swinging around inside. Let me know. Mm. Oh dear. Yeah, so um Kong's a new point of view character, which is different. Not necessarily good, but it's different. Um uh, I didn't actually no, you know what? No, it is good. I've changed my mind because I've yeah, just remembered yeah, a couple is. of scenes, uh, which I one one moment I specifically want to mention in spoilers, and I don't want to mention now because it's very funny. Okay. Um But bringing it back to the human characters, uh, like I said, probably the least annoying human cast, definitely com- to what I remember from the the, the previous film. Uh, Dan Stevens is brought in as a new character called Trapper who is a charismatic uh, vet at one point he's called uh, an Ace Ventura wannabe with his, and he's, yeah, that's a good vibe he's also a pilot and uh, an expert in maybe monarch stuff in general which if he was a vet maybe he wouldn't be aware of but you know whatever he does. He's, an all, he's an all action character who just does, does stuff and he's fun and he's charismatic and I and I liked him, but more importantly, um, I was delighted having just watched Ghostbusters that not everybody from the previous films needed to return yep. to hang out and share limited screen time uh, and to, to do to do nothing. They went, no, we only need five six characters. They're gonna do everything we need them to do and everyone else in previous films whether they wanted to come back or not you're not really necessary for this story maybe they'll come back in the next one but it's like it's really trimmed down the casting and i was just like this is what ghostbusters should have been they should have got rid of half the people who didn't need to be there and given everyone a slightly more room to breathe don't get me wrong they're still very basic characters (laughs) Mm. Well, yeah, but I think it t- it ticks a lot of cinema tropes, which I quite like. Like it, this film knows what it is. It's a, it's a a monster movie. It's a big smash and grab sort of big fighty movie. There's no other way of putting it. And the characters tick those boxes. Dan Stevens' character, as you say, like Trapper is. I wanted to hate him as soon as I saw him, but you know what? His character grows on me quite a lot. He's actually probably one of the better characters. I do like that they um they specifically mention something he's not good at, and I like that because usually these characters are talented at everything i think it's something like he has to to fly the plane for lack of a better way of putting it um and i think the first time he's like this isn't something that i know and i, I like that he has weakness and it's it's good to see it's essentially a, a spaceship that they're just flying around in yeah. the technology they've developed since the first film uh this th- this franchise has come so far away from godzilla when was that 2014 i think it's like the they in that film, they really focused on the humanity and the cost of Godzilla and these Titans mm-hmm. fighting. And that, they don't oh. give a monkeys. They don't, they don't care at all. They don't even <laughs> mention a death toll or anything. They, just, they don't give a bloody monkey, uh, monkeys about it. Can't, oh. Maybe. Hmm? Uh, there's, 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 there's only one death in the thing that we really focus on, and even that's glossed over within 30 seconds. Like, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's some fights in, in some cities and some po- populated areas, and at no mm. point in time does anybody go. In fact, I don't think you see any, any, you don't see a car fall on someone's head or anything. There's like no human casualties. Everyone's just, yeah. What? <laughs> just about getting out of the way. This film is the very definition of if a, a film exec just filmed their kid playing with action figures for about 20 minutes and went, no, that's the story. It's like, <laughs> 
Kong, Godzilla, <laughs> mash, 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 new guy, mash, 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 mash. Honestly, it's exactly that, 100% that. And all they've done is like, oh, we need some backdrops for it. What do you have over there? Oh, uh, you've got like a Seven Wonders of the World? Cool. All of those places we're going to mess up now. <laughs> they've, got, they've got their, their computer... <laughs> Uh, sleep screens on their wallpaper, and it's just going through. Oh, there's a bit of there's a bit of Rome. There's a bit of a another place and another place. These are all lovely landmarks, but which probably haven't already destroyed. Um, oh, yeah. Have they done London yet? They'll probably do London soon. No. Kong will probably like put the <laughs> the London Eye over Godzilla, so he's like, oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> Something like that. I'd, I'd like to see that. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, Kong forms uh, a friendship with Baby Kong, uh, which is quite fun. I won't say any more. Oh, uh, in this in this yeah. section, uh, what I will say is how hollow is the Hollow Earth? How many how many more Hollow Earths are there? And does there need to be an extra Hollow Earth? Like, Apparently, yes. <laughs> well, I don't think there does. So Kong goes exploring. This is this is fine. No spoilers, really. Uh, he goes exploring and he finds an unexplored, essentially Hollow Earth inside Hollow Earth. Like I say. Could it not have just been an uncharted bit where he's like goes over a mountain range in the hollow earth? Did it need to be another? Well, How yes, many are the there? <laughs> it did. Like they, they, they kind of mention. what uh, again, okay, we'll do this in spoilers, but it is a key plot device of what is under there can't get out because of an action that's happened. Oh, like, that yes, is true. Another way. I yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah. Stupid. Though. Should be paying attention to these cinematic masterpieces. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Stupid though. Don't like it. Uh, figure out, figure out a different policy. Like, I just feel like the next film they'll have to go to another Hollow Earth, and they'll be like four levels deep. Oh, uh, just be them in the core. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. What was that? Oh yeah, I've oh. mentioned how uh, everything in the Hollow Earth's too big, so Kong kind of loses his shine, and then he pops up onto the you know the top top surface, and he's like, oh bloody hell, it's pretty big actually, mm -hmm. pretty big. Um, so yeah, weird disconnect I felt with the scaling in general. If you not, if you notice that sort of thing, which I did, or I felt yeah. like I was, oh it, yeah, it does, it does mess you out. Um, ah oh dear, oh dear. Right, well, see, go for it. Well, I was gonna say, once you're looking at stuff like um, for some of the actual storytelling stuff, I did like the they've thrown in a couple of things like the symmetry between like um. Was it the one of the main apes? Uh, the way it meets an untimely end, and the story arc of that same kick coming in later for a redemption. Um, the symmetry of like adoption in this, like there, there's quite a lot of symmetry in it, which I liked. Um, there's also, have you heard of a concept called Chekhov's gun? Yeah, Chekhov's gun is uh, when... Oh, now I'm going to do a bad job of explaining it, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you absolute ass. <laughs> you could have said no and I would have explained it. Oh, no, I, I, haven't, I haven't got a clue, actually. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So Chekhov's gun is usually this idea in filmmaking where um, something important gets shown really early on and it comes back quite a bit later. Um, you see it in even films like Shaun of the Dead where they talk about the gun that's on top of the bar and then the gun comes in later. Um they use that in this with one of the creatures. It's like a little throwaway comment of like, oh, these things, it's really interesting for the, the biology of this place. 40 minutes later, very important to the final fight. So I, again, I like seeing cinematic use of stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, is that a spoiler? Are we just moving to spoilers? Like oh, I feel like I feel like I, I mean I said at the start I don't think there's too many things to spoil, but I also don't want there's to just quite a bit. throw things out. Quite a lot of things are in the in the trailers. You see, you know, Kong gets a gauntlet and stuff, but I feel like how mm. he get ends up with it, I don't want to just like shout out. Um I think it's safe to move to spoilers and then we can talk freely. Absolutely. Uh okay, so I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. Same. Completely agree. Um with the, the the caveat that you know, viewer slash listener, if you if you like this this franchise and where it's gone, you know the Godzilla Fast and Furious universe where it's just gone absolutely <laughs> back nonsense crazy. Stop myself yep. swearing. That's well <laughs> save myself some editing time there. <laughs> um, if you like the previous film, I think you'll enjoy this one more because I I think it's a better film actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you don't, 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 don't waste your time. Why don't, don't hate watch things. What's the point? Really? It, 
it's an easy watch it harks back to early day monster movies like i think every i don't know about you but i used to play games on ps2 which is like these two big monsters destroying a city it's got that little nostalgia feel in the back of my mind it's an easy watch you don't have to think too much you don't really if you, the less you question the better so just sit down enjoy the big smashy movie and uh, go home happy yeah um yeah thumbs up if you like the previous ones you'll like this one it is what it is all right let's get our spoiler on the screen kablamo uh kick us off with a spoiler <laughs> okay so again i said i liked the symmetry thing but they kind of make it too obvious with this because obviously there's there's kong versus other big ape uh scar king I think, yes or something like that and then they've got godzilla versus cold godzilla <laughs> basically uh shimu i think is the name um and then obviously in the main sort of cataclysmic fight scene which can be coming to a bit more um they do the whole movie poster to each side running at each other in slow-mo they cut away they cut back they cut away they cut it's just ridiculous i <laughs> I, I wanted to mention that actually <laughs> but about the run uh in non-spoilers because in the trailer i thought they were running from something i like yeah. they were like pat like because of the way it was edited made it look like they were getting away from a big horrible thing no they're running at something um <laughs> god <laughs> It's so, it looks so stupid. Godzilla it, it really should not it. run like that. He it, it just it looks so stupid. <sighs> then running side by side, he's moving at a speed he's never moved at before. Mm -hmm. It's it's dumb. I did enjoy, ironically, I think Kong riding Godzilla and yes. and the <laughs> the bad. He's an orangutan, right? He's certainly orange. I, I think so. Uh, he's riding his ice godzilla and they're <laughs> like they're jousting dumb yeah. um i also very much enjoyed the out of nowhere suplex godzilla does on oh, kong in I cairo discuss that with you yeah that was amazing I knew it. <laughs> my friend our friend uh especially <sighs> me the other day uh literally last night going no spoilers <laughs> but there's a suplex and i went i've seen it don't you worry we talked about it <laughs> out of nowhere it's a shame. Oh. It's a shame there wasn't like a I don't know a Stone Cold Stunner oh, or a, a Pedigree or even better if what, it had done a... Billy Gunn's Famouser uh, finisher. <laughs> oh, that would have been so good. It's, yeah, I know it's I they, know again they they, they anthropomorphize it a lot too much. Even in Godzilla, it tends to be a little bit more human. Than this, but obviously nowhere near as much as, as Kong is. But it I it threw me. Some of the fights were ridiculous. Like would be just before that happens, Kong is like something's happening. Um, should we should we go this way? No, no, no! Don't don't attack! Don't attack! And then oh yeah, attacks. he's like probably oh no no don't attack! <laughs> Provocation expressions. Yeah. If he was as smart as as he's meant to be, he would have just jumped back into the ho hollow earth, and Godzilla would yeah. have probably followed him, and then he'd have just yeah. been you know they get out of the portal on the other side, and he's pointing over there, going oi, bad orangutan who's got a a skeleton whip, which doesn't make sense either. By the way, how That's is that stain to work? Ever. How has he done yeah. that? No, no. So um, when they walk across the giant skeleton bridge, I was like, well, that's just not how that works. I, I know a lot about spines. <laughs> um, so, yeah, neither of those things work sensibly. Um, yeah. It's a cool weapon, uh, but yeah, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. Um, on the end of that cool, um, implausible whip uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a dagger spine is it from is it from the ice titan that's i think so one of his i think it's from Shimu. spikes and he's taken it out and yeah. now he can use it to control i'm Ooh. gonna keep calling him ice titan because i'm not gonna be the guy who <laughs> incorrectly names him could you imagine the comments oh, um <laughs> i think yeah that that he, he just waves his thing around and gets him to attack i mean I, dare i question science or logic or <laughs> what is that mad is that just pure magic what's happening here but well, you kind of do mention magic quite a bit in this one. There's some stuff I definitely want to discuss, but I do think it's probably worth talking about what the actual second half of the story is, where in in the uh, Hollow Earth, there's these group of other apes, other Kongs, I guess, that have been trapped there by Godzilla back in the day because one of them, the Scar King, wanted to run topside Earth, and that's why they're kind of trapped, and that's why they're trying to get back out, and the people down there are calling for help. Uh, and that's kind of the main promise of the story. Um, Kong does this sort of like trap for these little creatures. I say little creatures, they're massive, but little creatures. Uh, it opens up the rift and it's very heavily hinted that 
one of the ape scar kings specifically gets out um destroys the the outpost in hollow earth and then suddenly he's trapped back down again and it doesn't make sense to me it's a bit of a plot hole yeah that's never actually explained is it exactly yeah, no I, not i'd all. forgotten about that there's yeah the outpost gets destroyed and... and there's a big red Kong hand, and they're like, "Is that Kong?" No, that's not Kong. And yeah. then there's no other apes about until they go underneath to the subterranean area level. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yep. I'm giving this film a thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it deserves one really because it is just dumb, silly nonsense. Oh, but... It was gratuitous and fun. It's too it's... long. I also I wanted to re that was the thing I wanted to recap just before we went into spoilers. It's too long. There's absolutely no. Right. This film, and any film like it, has no right to go over 90 minutes. Honestly, keep it tight, it was, lads. No, it was fine. Like, the pacing wasn't bad at all. I didn't mind it. I don't mind a long film anyway. Like, I'll watch a three, four-hour film happily. Nah. But this I want an 89-minute max. <laughs> Including credits. Long. No, I'm joking. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, Kong, Kong befriends uh, Little... Kong. They call him Little Kong in the trailer, but he's clearly not a Kong because Kong's no, a not at all. gorilla, uh, yeah. and he's a uh, kind of. I, mean, I think I, I want to call him orangutans because they're orange, but I'm not entirely convinced. Um, no. He he. Okay, so Kong <laughs> Kong goes down into the into the, to the second Hollow Earth, mm -hmm. um, in in which the monkeys are trapped but not trapped based on our previous conversation. Um, and essentially, no bad terms, he gets mugged. <laughs> That's a straight up mugging. Multiple attempt, times. <laughs> which is hilarious. Little Kong uh, uh, is, is befriended as a result. And they, they have formed this friendship, uh, untrusting friendship. Um, mm. But in that initial fight scene, Godzilla uses Little Kong <laughs> as a weapon and just swings him around. Because Little Kong's being a little... A little, a little bugger, and uh, yeah. trying to bite him and whatnot. <laughs> he just ends up. There's like three other big gorillas, mm -hmm. uh, and it just cracks them. It's very funny. And also at the end of that, the best moment of the film is one of the gorillas, who I presume is the one who like ha who seems to hate him more. Back at the when they go to like the the lava base, yeah, there's one that seems to particularly dislike Kong. Uh, I assume, so I assume it's the same one. He's running away because their uh, their mugging has gone horrendously wrong. <laughs> Godzilla, Godzilla. Kong picks up a rock and throws it. And you can, you see the, the bad gorilla running away. Kong in the background. The rock in the sky. Not Dwayne Johnson. The thing he's thrown. Um, and it's in the air for so long. And then just conks him in the head. It should have oh. had, and it may have even had it, or I may have just imagined it post. It should have had the classic, like, coconut clunk sound, you know. It, it, it had a comedy sound effect. Oh, it did. That's why I can imagine yeah, it yeah. so well. And that scene is like a one-for-one one rip off of the, um, the Crocodile Dundee thing where he, like, someone's tried to rob him, they're running away, he picks up a can of beans and lobs it. It's the one for one, it's perfect. It's, oh, it's exactly the same. It's so funny. <laughs> anyway, he, become, he, he, he becomes best mates with uh, Little Kong eventually, although Little Kong doesn't mm. trust him. Slash tries to lure him to his death several times with a big <laughs> water snake thing, but Kong just... Yep. Kong, Kong has such an easy time with it, he kills it off screen. Ah, <laughs> oh, incredible. Um... Uh, I think I think the, the only true spoiler that uh -huh. this film has is that Mothra or a version of Mothra, yeah, uh, is down in the in the secret society, and and then uh, gets brought back. Um, I'm not entirely sure how the little girl <laughs> brings her back. What was she? What what does she do? Anything? This is this is my point. Like the whole. Uh, Iwi tribe being down there just doesn't sit right with me. And I was willing to accept a load of it, like the fact they can control gravity with liquid metal. And you oh, you're fine with that, are you? You're fine with the gravity control. I'm not. That's silly. <laughs> it's absolutely silly, but you've got to take into account Hollow Earth, Second Hollow Earth, giant creatures, all the other stuff that's going on. Um, a tree that eats someone, which we haven't even properly discussed. Um, that's true. But but then there's like, well, we're going to talk to each other through uh, uh, telekinesis. Telepathy, telekinesis is moving things. Oh yes, that's what I meant. <laughs> um, 
And like, you know what? I'm, I was like, okay, this is stupid, but you know what? Some animals do weird stuff, and like, we'll allow it. We'll allow it. And then they're like, well, this giant titan apex predator, Mothra, just appears because this little girl walks to the top of the crystal pyramid, and I'm, I have a problem with that. Like, just I'm like, willing to accept all the other idiocies, but this is just. Well, Mothra was there, much. basically, just not. Mothra was inside her cocoon, I guess. Mm -hmm. It didn't really look like a cocoon, but whatever. Uh, and then the little girl essentially walks up to it and rings the doorbell. And then Mothra's like, fine, I'll come out. <laughs> Didn't want to come out for anyone else. And just flies yeah. around a bit. Um, and essentially the only role Mothra has in it, other than saving a few people later on, uh, is, uh, is, is going up to Cairo and telling Godzilla to just chill the F out, mate. Yeah. Kong isn't trying to fight you. He's trying to get you to... He's, he's trying to recruit you and bring you down to the Hollow Earth to deal with a problem. He just wants to be mate. Stop being so bloody rude, says Mothra. Mm -hmm. um, and that's basically, yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, cool, Mothra's back. <laughs> yeah. They, what they do with the, the Titans doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Like I say, there's suddenly a, a whole society of, of apes and then uh, Shimu is hidden behind this lava wall that they can just pull aside with a rock, of course. And then... She like I say, Shimu is basically Ice Godzilla, but they treat Shimu as uh, a pet, basically. And even at the end of the film, Kong is like, "Good boy," patting him on the yeah, side, yeah, like, like rubbing yeah. his chin, go goo And it is very much the Pluto and Goofy situation of Disney. Like they're both dogs, but one of them is a pet, and one of them isn't. Like, yeah. why is this okay? <laughs> Which I don't get. Yeah, that's a bit weird. Um, mm -hmm. In general, I don't understand why there are so many titans around and everyone's just chill with it but yeah where well, have they like seen... weren't they they weren't there like five years ago <laughs> they're everywhere. Well, the, the giant crab which is an interesting fight which i actually quite enjoyed why is it in rome that i would have liked some sort of like crab's legs joke where he cracks off and whatever but fine um i did like they put tiamat in there which is um a reference to like some old uh, mesopotamian uh creature which i like which has also made its way into D and D. So it's a nice little throwback name and a little bit of research if you want to do it, because I love doing research, apparently. <laughs> um. Are we yeah, done? Is silly. that the show? I, I think so. There's so much more we can discuss, but it's a silly film. You will you won't come out feeling smarter, um, but you'll <laughs> hopefully you'll enjoy, and it'll be a throwback to a childhood of like silliness. That's There's a lot of punching. I've just remembered the one thing I did want to say. How yeah. convenient is it that they just so happened to have completed before the project got shut down the gauntlet that kong needs on exactly the right hand <laughs> that gets injured uh and it's you know it's got the inbuilt syringes to fix frostbite oh man so convenient convenient yeah 100%, and it's just right. and it's in the hollow earth and already yeah the uh, Ace Ventura pilot guy just goes and gets it in like 10 minutes, even though they'd walked so far away from their ship. And then he had to fly back to the outpost, which had been destroyed earlier. <laughs> anyway, oh. that's the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We super appreciate it. Or listening on Spotify, if that's your <gasps> podcast, yum, yum, yum of choice. That's, um, you know how people consume podcasts. Hey, yum, yum, yum. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, this has been our Godzilla X Kong, the new Empire review. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Farewell. Bye-bye.